And then there were three, which is to say three comics left on my list of what ended up being the 10 most memorable comics reads of 2022 for me. The seven other comics on this list have been discussed in parts one and two of this video series, and I'll link those up here and in the description below. And anyone who knows me and this channel even a little bit knows that I don't believe in, or rather I'm not capable of ranking comics against each other. That's also the reason I don't use letter grades and numbers scores or out of five ratings, which means that the three comics I'm going to talk about today aren't the top three of this 10. This entire list has been unranked and held together more from a half chronological, half autobiographical approach. There are traces of everything we've seen on the list so far in these last three books. We've had a lot of nonfiction on this list so far, and one of these three books is nonfiction. The other two books are not only fiction, but assuredly genre works of fiction, something we haven't seen on this list since the very first book. In keeping with the mix of old favorites and new to me creators, three out of the four creators involved in these three books I am familiar with, making the fourth creator someone whose work I'm seeing for the first time. I'm sure there's a handful of other things I may or may not find in common between these three books and the other books I've talked about before, but we'll get to all that as we look at the last three of my most memorable comics reads of 2022. <laughs> Some months ago, I made a video on three black and white comics, the Inkal in its deluxe black and white edition, Life of Che, the impressionistic biography by Osterheld and Breccia, and the next book on this list, the Forest by Thomas Ott. Now, I'm a big fan of Thomas Ott's and I've talked about his comics often on this channel. I talk about this book in detail in that video, but also his other books have often cropped up on my shelf videos and my live streams. So you may be thinking that it's not that surprising that a new book by him would make my end of year most memorable comics list. But I have to say that once I put it on the list, I started second guessing myself from the point of view of the audience because this is only 25 pages long. And not only that, each page is a single image done in Thomas Ott's signature scratchboard style. So the entire comic is just 25 images. On top of that, there is no text. There's no speech. There are no captions. There's no writing in this at all. So 25 silent full page images shouldn't seem substantial enough, I was thinking, to present as one of the most memorable reads of the year. But the truth of it is that this book is is absolutely indelible. I have found myself summoning up images from this book voluntarily and involuntarily throughout the year. It has made such a deep impression on me, not just because of the terrific atmosphere and mood that these images conjure up, something I'm quite familiar with Thomas Ott's skill at doing, but the way that this created a unique reading experience for me. That was really what puts it on this list. As I went through these 25 pages, I went through almost the entire spectrum of reading reading at a primal level. I pulled the book closer, I startled back from it, I turned back to see if I had missed something, I had missed something, so I started looking even closer, which in turn gave me a jolt at a certain point of time. I'm not going to spoil by showing more than the couple of beginning images that I already have of this book, but Thomas Ott taking me on this journey that is chilling and surreal, but at the same time, perhaps his most emotional and his most optimistic work the forest was able to manipulate me as a reader with a presentation that is lean and minimalistic but also oppressive and opulent. A chilling and warming read that is a clear and simple reminder of how powerful comics can be, how elemental they can be, Thomas Ott's The Forest is truly hard to shake. The next book on my list is a book I've talked about here on YouTube before, but not on my channel. Towards the end of 2022, Nearman Condition and the uncanny Omar reached out to me asking if I wanted to be part of this big video they were putting together with dozens and dozens of comics YouTubers all giving their favorite read of the year. I had just finished reading this book. This was one of the last two books of the year that I'd read. It was fresh in my mind, but I had no doubt that it was make any kind of top 10 that I would maybe make for that year. And that's why my submission for that and the next book on my list is 
Ducks by Kate Beaton, published by Drawn and Quarterly. I've been a fan of Kate Beaton's webcomic Hark of Vagrant for many years. I got those webcomics in their hardcover collected editions, Hark of Vagrant and Step Aside Pops, but I've not really known much else from her outside of those. That's not technically true. She did do a funny short for Marvel's Strange Tales, and that's her cover on the second collected volume. But Ducks is a complete departure from her literary, historical, self-aware gag comics. It does have humor in it, but it's also quite a dark and serious book at the same time. And it tells a story of the author having just graduated from college and having these huge student loans that she wants to pay off as fast as possible, taking a job at the oil sands of northern Canada. This book is uncomfortable, even though it has a light touch and humor that runs through much of it, the things that it talks about, the things about people and groups of people living together and how different facets of human society and culture can either be completely destroyed or hidden, replaced by different culture brought on by work and environment. The power of the experiences and the storytelling of this book is definitely something that commends it to the levels of one of the best reads of the year. But why it's stuck in my mind isn't just because of the gripping story that it tells or even of the interesting questions that it raises. Maybe the biggest reason why this sticks in my mind is because of its refusal to play easy blame. What you think the book is about changes a couple of times and when you think the story is almost over, it picks up and goes in a surprising new direction. And by the time one reaches the end of this book, no matter what you think of the simple art style, no matter what you think of the direct presentation, I think most people will agree this being a complex and weighty read worthy of revisiting over and over again. And the last book on my list might be for some people the most anticlimactic pick for a variety of reasons. First of all, not only is it not a 2022 book, and that's fair enough, I said I was always catching up on years previous, but it is more than half a century old, so I'm really late getting to it. And not only that, it is widely, almost universally considered one of the greatest comics ever created. So of course it would have to be on my list, right? Now we all know that's not necessarily true. I think we've all been in that position where we've read something hailed as a masterpiece and felt a little underwhelmed, if not outright confused as to what people are talking about. But my list is based on what was most memorable and I can't lie about that. And if it happens to be a decades old, widely acknowledged masterpiece, so be it. Because of course, I'm talking about the Eternaut, written by Hector German Osterheld and drawn by Francisco Solano Lopez, published here by Fantagraphics in its English edition. Although The Eternaut was originally published in 1957, it didn't see an English edition until 2015, which is when Fantagraphics first brought it out. It sold out of a couple of printings and has been hard to find ever since, until it was reprinted and thanks to friend of the channel Stormy, I was finally able to get my hands on it and read it last year. I mentioned that I had started reading this in one of my live streams. I've got a little bit of personal background in my struggles to get my hands on this book in that live stream. But now that I've finished reading it, I could throw my two cents into the millions and millions of dollars already collected by saying this is a terrific comic. The Eternaut, or El Eternauta in the original Spanish, is a thrilling post-apocalyptic sci-fi epic. The thing I was most concerned about before I read this was not just the general, what if I don't like something everyone loves? Uh, apart from that, I was worried that it would be, since it was from 1957, dated and of its time in a way that I would maybe appreciate for historical reasons, but wouldn't appeal to my sense of modern storytelling consumption, whatever that may be. The other thing I was worried about, and this came from reading the other version of the Eternaut that exists, Eternaut 1969, the incomplete version that Osterheld did with Alberto Breccia that I talked about in another video of mine, particularly because of that truncated version, I was worried that it would be very heavy with political allegory and references to South American politics of the time that would be completely over my head, making large parts of the work inaccessible to me. There was also this tertiary thought that not all allegories work for me. Some 
sometimes I find them very heavy handed. And in spite of its reputation, I was worried that that might be the case over here. I'm not just relieved, but I'm ecstatic to say that none of those apply, at least in my view. The Eternaut has this classic timeless feel. It feels like a newspaper strip, but it holds together page after page, chapter after chapter so well that it's hard to think of it as something that was broken up and serialized. It just has so much integrity. To say that this is a thrilling page turner is an understatement. The mystery of what's going on just leads to more questions and more mysteries. And that journey is something that we as the readers never really have a choice about. It grips us from the very first page and never lets go. The story harkens to all kinds of classic literature and survival literature like Robinson Crusoe or Swiss Family Robinson, but also the works of H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, especially the journey to the center of the earth. At the same time, is very reminiscent of modern horror survival sci-fi, whether it is the Day of the Triffids or Night of the Living Dead. The excitement of the story is so anchored in things that we are familiar with, like those, that the artistic and expressionistic aspects of it never stand out as arty. In fact, it seemed to me that political allegory was slight. Instead, just like many of my favorite reads, including ones that I've talked on this list before, instead the focus was so much on these individuals and particularly their ingenuity that there was an, honestly not a single moment that I thought I was being preached at or being lectured about anything at all. The joy of seeing human resilience and inventiveness in the face of this worldwide catastrophe, it's a joy that we are quite familiar with. We love seeing things in movies and books where people repurpose and refashion things that no longer have a use to be extremely useful in other ways. There's a reason why duct tape is so important in so many post-apocalyptic stories. The way that survivors work things out, the way they argue and debate, the points that they make and the stances that they have, these are all so clearly and so effectively communicated to us because we get people who feel like real people. They're not simply representing ideas, they're particular human beings. Another part of the story that I thought that the Eternaut was about a lonely wanderer, something that is insinuated in the very first few pages. And interestingly, that's not really a big part of the story at all. The vast majority of the story is about groups of people and how groups of people function and which other groups of people they're going up against. To me, there's no way I can do this book justice just talking about it for five minutes. But suffice to say that the scope, the density, the ambition, and the incredible skill of the writing and the art in The Eternaut are all of a level that makes this one of those few works where it's not only as good as the hype, but even maybe beyond it. A book that I would love to see everyone talk about and pull apart and dissect because it really can take it. It can hold up to that kind of scrutiny and then so, of course, there was never any doubt in my mind that The Eternaut by Osterheld and Lopez was definitely, definitely, finally one of the most indelible comics reads of 2022. So there you have it, my most memorable comics reads of 2022. I hope you enjoyed these episodes. This has been For the Love of Comics, and I'll see you at the next video.